Hi, Glenn. How are you? <clears throat> Good, Andy. How are you? I'm okay. I kicked you out earlier so I could change some of the meeting settings before we started. That's all right. People are having people are having issues with the extra security stuff we put in place. So, including including our host and co-host. So, <laughs> <laughs> I turned them most of them off. I figured if people registered and got the link, they should uh, be mostly legit. So, and I'll just boot anybody who gets out of out of line if if we have that happen again. I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Uh, so how's things? Oh, I'm struggling with all these freaking changes. Oh my god. You ain't kidding. We're getting punished for, for good credit now, huh? Yeah, yeah. That and now there's a four-year mortgage to go with it. So prices are gonna stay inflated. Nothing like yes. interfering with the free market. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think people are gonna hold now. They're just gonna put more money into what they have, and so it's gonna slow the market down. I think we'll see a little bit of that, but I think with the, the, this 40 year mortgage thing, it's, it's essentially going to create a whole generation of people who are renting and not getting any equity. Have you seen the amortization table for a 40 year mortgage? No. <laughs> so you literally pay in a normal payment. Let's say it's 2,500 a month, right? For a, for a half million dollar shack. And you don't actually, by the time you've paid, what's 2,500 times 12 months, uh, 275, 20, 29,000, whatever, you yeah. have less than 1,200 equity in your home at the end of the year Gee. for the first year because they front load the insurance so much. Yeah. So it's basically creating like a rent to own situation, except for not really. Well, I've heard they have hundred-year mortgages in the, in Germany and other countries. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I, I do a lot of stuff yeah. with. I got a few. Well, not a lot, but I, I have three different banks I work with in Australia, in Sydney, and almost all of the mortgages in Sydney and in Australia and New Zealand are variable rate. They don't have a thirty-year fixed. It doesn't exist. Oh. Holy cow! So they're they're all like. It's a different. It's a different animal over there right now. It's it's a mess. That's the whole crazy. Thing in in Southeast yeah. Asia is jacked up. The one of my clients used to pay me within fifteen days of doing a job. The last time it took them ninety. Ninety. Wow. It's because they used a bank that was locking down deposits in Singapore, and they couldn't get the money converted to the U.S. dollar and over here to pay me because of all of the banking issues that they're having over there from a cash flow standpoint. I'm like, all right, well. Unbelievable. Yeah, gotta love it. I'm gonna text Joe and figure out where the heck he is. Yeah, I saw a funny thing on uh, this YouTube video on Italy. You can actually buy villas over there for a Euro now. But you have to you have to commit to doing so much, putting so much money into the place because they have such a shortage of people there. They're encouraging people to go over there and buy their stuff and fix it up. Yeah, they have a lot of, um, they, they're really aging out as a population in Italy. Like there's yeah. just not a lot of people. No. Nope. There's a lot of tourists, a lot of young tourists go there, but there's not a lot of, not a lot of industry, not a lot of anything like they still have some factories and they still have some textiles and stuff and obviously food, but. Tourism's their main, yeah, main industry, definitely. Yep. You can't survive on that alone. No. But I remember when my father was buying properties in the seventies and eighties here, they were, he was paying a buck for them. The same situa situation. They just wanted somebody to take it over and pay taxes and commit to yeah. doing a rehab. Yeah. Gosh, where is everybody? Running late. And it's because of the security stuff. Nobody, nobody downloads the Zoom app and logs into it on their desktop computers, which is the only thing I use. I use it on use the apps on my tablets and on whatever but we had that one bunch of kids that logged in and zoom bombs so we put all the security in place and 
they're not going to be up eight in the morning and New York time to freaking screw with us. Like, <laughs> and that we moved in person for the other meeting. So, you know, we may as well just run with it. Well, there's Gabe. Oh, Scott's on in California. So he's not going to be on because it's 5 a.m. Uh, yeah. like almost six. I guess it's almost six. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Gabe. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Joe's trying to get on. I'm just going to text him a link, or maybe I'll email him a link, actually. Maybe that's easier. It's a lot easier this time around. I turned off all the security stuff. You don't have to be signed in. I don't understand why you guys don't just download the app to your desktop and stay logged in at all times. It makes life so much easier. It gives you pop-ups <laughs> when meetings are supposed to be starting. You just click a button and it joins you. Like It's mint. I love the app. And I have the app, too. I never used it. <laughs> You okay. sign in once and you just set it to turn on every time your computer comes on and you're just on Zoom. And if you have a personal phone number, like I made mine match my Google Voice phone number, people can just, if they know your Google Voice number, they can just dial you on Zoom and just your phone, your computer will ring. Wow. And you can just take a video call that way. Oh, it's the coolest. It's, it's, it's so freaking convenient. Hey, I'm just talking about you. Yep. And then it emails, and then and then when are you logged in though, onto the thing? I mean, are you logged in on Freya? You have to be logged in on Freya to register, but it's the same link we've been using. So if you have it like on your calendar somewhere, you can just click the old link. So Andy, how are things looking for uh, like the building materials? Oh, sorry.
All right. Now building materials are still going up like lumber came down, but everything else went up. So, um, but a lot of that is margin because they know there's going to be a slowdown in housing. So a lot of the prices that you're seeing that are still inflated are inflated because there's more margin between the manufacturer and the retailer or reseller and the resellers have inflated their margins and they used the COVID pandemic and the supply chain stuff and the building materials as an excuse to keep them high because they're still gonna have the same amount of bills to pay, right? They, they still have to pay all their employees, they have to pay their rent, they have to pay all the expenses for operating their business, even when they're selling less product and would, would be making less money. So they all make a margin play. And then they become very strategic in how they negotiate their pricing for stuff. So like there's a lot, there's probably between 15 and 20% of margin just buried into stuff right now that they can play with but they don't want to because they want to make sure that they can keep their doors open and their lights on because if they sell less and their bills don't go down that's how bad things happen right so it's right now is the time when people should be looking at their dealers and saying okay i know you're not paying for this like perfect example the toilets that i recommend everybody puts in i know what home depot pays because i'm friends with the vp of the company that sells them right I know what it costs them to ship it from China to here. And I know how they operate their, you know, their backend inventory and, and shipping stuff, right? They've combined HD supply with Home Depot.com, with the stores, blah, blah, blah. And they're retailing them on dot com for $220 each. It's more than a hundred dollars of profit. My customers are paying about a hundred and 50 ish for them when I negotiate and set up the orders. They should probably only be paying about, if all things were equal, they should, they should be paying around 135 or 140, but the, the, the box, the depot is actually burying up charges so that the company's paying something. They're marking that up and they're showing the stores and HD supply a different cost on paper. So the, so the corporate office is now making money off those sales to keep their expenses under control. And then they are fulfilling the orders through HD supply instead of through the stores, unless the store has it in stock. So then HD supply is putting a markup on it. So HD supply is making another X percent. And so, the, the, where I used to be able to just order them and it came through the store supply chain and they were paying 130, 140 bucks. Now they're paying 150, 160, depending on who it is and how much they buy at a time because there's extra padding that they're building in because they know bad things are coming. <laughs> and it's, a, it's that way for everything. Every non-commodity products, like they didn't take a price increase I know the cost that they're that Home Depot actually pays for those containers full of toilets and and just it is what it is. So Andy, you know your numbers. What you gotta do, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for getting me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Sorry, Take everybody. Care, buddy. I've talked too much as it is. No, you know, are you kidding me? You're like a wealth of knowledge, man. What's in that brain? It takes like three three or four of my brains to handle what you, you have in just your one. It's unbelievable. So, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So by the way, I was having problems getting on as obviously as most of you know, um, Scott Spear, who's supposed to be on this call with us, he is on the West coast enjoying life three hours behind schedule. And he goes, so he texts me, I text him last night and I go, Hey, don't forget about the call. And he goes, wait a second. That means I have to be on at 5.45 a.m. <laughs> he goes, hey, good. <laughs> I call him a quitter. But, uh, but yeah, so he, he sees this, like, he says, nope. He says, I, I, you know, I'll probably do the next one. But, yeah, so he's three hours behind us. And uh, somewhere, I think, in, he's either in San Diego or, or somewhere. Over there. I know he's somewhere on the West Coast, on, right on the water, on the beach. So he sends his regards. Um, 
by the way, I appreciate people showing up. Uh, for those you don't know, I'm sure everybody knows, I'll see if there's any new people on here. This is the Alternative Real Estate Investments Meeting. Uh, we focus on everything real estate except for tenants and toilets. So if you want to talk about tenants and toilets, there's going to be a whole separate meeting. That's going to be next Thursday morning. And that's going to be, at, uh, Andy, that's still at Ezzy's, right? Yes, and Becca is running it because Pat and Beth are in Florida. On the beach. On the and Bob, I think, is still in Florida for another couple of weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. He's hard to get a hold of. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I just guess where he happens to be. Yeah. All these people are traveling. Why? Thanks to real estate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, oh and, and Bob and Becca and Jake are going to go to National this year, and National's being held in Vegas. Oh, wow. So, yep. Yep. So they'll come back with a bunch of good stuff for us when they, you know, it's at the end of June, but they're going to go out there and just absorb knowledge for three or four days from all the other RIAs in the country, talk about speakers that travel and all that stuff. So, yeah. It's fantastic. A lot of great news coming out. It's going to be fantastic. So, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. So next Thursday morning will be that meeting. And then Thursday night, the, that's going to be the next main meeting. Andy, is that going to be a Ferraris or is that moved to Da Vinci's? It won't be moved to Da Vinci's until I think our first Da Vinci's to, I think the first meeting at the Rochester Yacht Club is going to be July. Okay. So Bill got uh, Ferraris next week and next month, and then we're going to bounce and go to the yacht club. So, and it's going to cost us a little bit more money because we're not getting, we have to pay for the space and then buy food also. Yeah. But overall it's got more room because we're rapidly outgrowing Ferraris. Like people can't hear. Yeah. And it's standing, the standing room only usually. You can't even find yeah. enough seats. And that's the other problem is we just don't have enough space in that meeting room. So we'll keep, your meeting there we'll keep carl's meeting there yeah but yeah that's a good thing it is no it's good to keep 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 busy like if we end up with 60 to 100 people at every single meeting there's only really less than 300 members that's pretty freaking good activity from a, just an organizational standpoint so yeah, it is absolutely so that's good that's gonna be great and for those of you who don't know just plug into the free website ffrea.com take a look exactly what's going on uh, but yeah, so next Thursday morning will be the landlord meeting tenants and toilets to your heart is ever so content. And then, um, I don't know what the actual meeting is going to be Thursday night or what the actual subject is. It's Steve Peterson. He's coming Ooh. to do free legal advice for everyone. So okay. if you have legal questions, it's, it's Steve Peterson's night and it's, we're not even going to bother sending him a bunch of prepped stuff. Like we just uh, open, open floor. Like he can, he can do his little, here's the things I see coming. And then open floor for Q&A with Steve. Yeah, so. and for those of you who don't know, Steve Peterson does single family house deals. He also does 30, 40, 50 million dollar hotel and apartment complex deals and everything in between. So if you yep. have questions, he's the guy to talk to. Okay. Yep. Um, and I get free legal advice from any other attorney around. They're going to charge you 120 to $400 an hour for their time to pick their yep. brains. Steve does this for free. I know, free, which is insane. <laughs> and if you're a and if you're a free member, he does it for you. He'll he'll consult with you in the hope that he'll get some closings and other stuff from you. So yeah, yeah. And a good I've been I've been using Steve for twenty I think twenty eight years now. It's crazy as it's he just grinds through it. He just yeah. he knows his crap and he he's high transaction, which keeps his costs low. Like yeah. Yeah. if you call. Steve at 6 30 in the morning, he will be in his office. He yeah. is in his office. You call him Sunday morning. Sometimes he'll call me between 7 30 and 10 30 in the morning on Sundays. He's in his office playing catch up for Monday. Yeah. He he's a grinder. He's you know, so yeah, he's a he's a really good guy. So next Thursday night, that will that's that starts at what? Uh starts at 5 30. We well, people can start getting there at five. Yeah. But you know, people usually don't actually start showing up till 530. It just depends on the weather. Yeah. Like if it's really nice out, people might be there at five. If yeah. it's pouring rain and miserable and you can't stand out on the patio, then people might not show up till six. But, yeah. 
you know, we've, we've kind of tried to automate a lot of stuff. So like, as long as we get everybody signed in and emails written down and in the system and all that, we're good. We're going to start giving away gift cards for people who show up at the meetings and sign in. Like you don't sign in, you're not eligible to get a gift card, that kind of stuff. So Perfect. just to try and make sure stuff is going right. And then we're going to do a little bit of a drive to get people to sign up for their Home Depot. Now that we have the free membership level, we need people to make sure that their Home Depot stuff is up to date and accurate because basically Home Depot is paying the bill for all the money we spend on our members. So we need, we need our members to actually like have their stuff set up at Home Depot so that they get their rebates, but also so we get ours. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So basically, yeah, you're going to be signing up for a rebate. Else, which we're yep. all using and it's and literally it's, free money with minimal effort yep exactly you're gonna oh, oh, we go there anyways anyways right. even if you hate um, home depot you're spending money at home depot yes 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 we are and i had, when i was running that program i had customers getting 20 to forty thousand dollars every six months in rebates in just rebates for doing nothing other than buying what they needed to buy yeah yeah. And they were getting killer pricing because they were spending so much money. But so and by the way, oh and by the way, Steve's gonna start speaking at seven. He'll go to about 745, but he's gonna be there before and he'll also be there afterwards. Yep. Okay. So if you want to talk to him on the side or one-on-one, -on -one, there's gonna be plenty of time to plenty of time to talk to him. Get there earlier so that way you can get to him before everybody else. Because afterwards he's gonna get inundated. So get that there. Okay. Um, is there, first of all, are there any first timers on here? Because I, I know there's only a few of us on here right now, but I don't know anyone on here has been on here for the first time. Just me, Joe, I, Dan Whalen. Wait, who is Dan! I'm like, who the hell is DJ 99? You know, I can't figure out how to change it. My son set it for a meeting for his baseball team and put his uh, baseball number on. So I'm going to roll with it. Dan, how are you? If you want me to change it, I can change it for you. And yeah, no, I think it's, you know, unique. All right. Fair enough. Well, good thank morning, you. Dan. Good morning. Good. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me. Dan, yeah. do a quick 30 yeah, second all these intro. About Home Depot. Oops. I'm sorry. Oh. Say that one more time. Uh, Dan, do a good, just a really quick 30 second intro. Who you are and what you're looking to do in real estate. Uh, sure. My name is Dan Whalen. Uh, some of you might know me uh, uh, or my father, Jim Whalen. Uh, Jim is uh, a friend of Joe's as well as some other FRIA members. Uh, my brother and I own Rochester Bath and Kitchen in East Rochester, and we are a big uh, pro perks at HD uh, account. So uh, we get a lot of rebates through them anyways. Uh, and I'm here really to learn uh, to, to network. Uh, and honestly, my father's and my father and I have spoken about it for a long time. I should have been here years ago. Uh, our business has just been so busy that I haven't had the opportunity and I joined Freya last month. Woo! Glad you did. Uh, welcome Dan. It's good to see you. Thanks you as well. And, uh, is there anyone else who's new here has not been on here? Okay, perfect. So, oh, hang on. you got one. Oh, go ahead. Don't be shy. I am not Ann Pasco. I'm oh, Tom. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm going to change that. Then. We don't accidentally call you Ann. Yeah, I don't know why I signed it that way. But no, I've been here before. Uh, good to see you guys again. It's been a while. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm back and running here. So, perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, welcome Ann, back. Right? Yeah. And just, you know, we like to everybody introduce themselves, especially their new good thing about this because it's very personable and it's not like a regular big group setting. We can actually talk, we can actually go over stuff and and you know and be, tailor things a little bit to everybody else here. Okay. Um, uh, real quick here, we do what's called has and wants. Uh, let us know what the heck you're looking for. Um, and by the way, there's a chat box on here. Put your contact information on there. If you don't put it on there and we find a deal that you may be interested in, we're not going to call you because we're not going to know who to call. And if you don't tell us what you're looking for, we're not going to call you because you didn't tell us. 
the other person is going to get the phone call instead of you <laughs> very nicely. So speak up real quick here. What Anybody tell us what you're looking for or what you may have for sale? Don't be shy, people. Well, I guess I'll jump in first. Uh, I'm looking to uh, uh, purchase some rental property. In the past, I was a landlord. Uh, I then started my business about 17 years ago. And as we were growing, I just couldn't handle doing both. Uh, so I'm looking for anywhere from two to three unit properties as well as commercial properties. Uh, I'm looking for long-term investment, uh, something to, to have another nest egg. Okay. Yeah. Now, Dan, real quick here. Are you looking for something that's, because I know you're busy. I mean, you're like unbelievably busy. Are you looking for turnkey only? So that way, you know, you sign, here's the keys and they're up and running. Or are you looking for something that may possibly need a little bit of work? I'm looking for something. I don't mind putting the sweat equity into it. Uh, my first rental I bought when I was in my early 20s, it was a rooming house for women in the 60s that had been vacant for 18 years. And I went in and deconverted it to a three family. And I lived there for eight years. I owned the property for uh, 12 in total. Uh, but I, I really learned uh, how much I was interested in, in uh, real estate at that point because my tenants paid the place off for me in eight years as a young homeowner. So that's what I'm looking to do. Okay. All right. All right. Who else? What else is everybody looking for here? Unlike mine's with, mine with boards on the windows. <laughs> me too <laughs> all right yeah, i've been looking at uh, i've been looking at the auctions uh you know I, I bought a lot of stuff at downtown at exchange street auctions and made out really well with those and looking to buy more but uh not real aggressive about it yet because i think there's there's gonna be a reset here pretty soon with the prices yeah. so yeah, yeah. And we're gonna talk about that too actually We'll do yeah. that after we do the hats and wants. All right. Who else? I'm looking for stuff in Knoxville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's it. Knoxville, not in New York. Okay. No yeah. New York for me, but Knoxville, Maryville, east side of Tennessee, maybe, maybe as far as Nashville, but maybe not. I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. And then I, hard, I do hard money through my IRA. So going in on a deal with Joe and Scott shortly. Oh so, yeah, the yeah. Stewart facility. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, who else? So, so I'm looking for uh, my first property. <clears throat> my wife and I are teaming up here and uh, okay. we are looking for long-term rentals. Uh, I've been uh, working with Bob. Um, Bob Napier? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, he's uh, mm -hmm. He's... He's my mentor. And uh, I was seeking properties uh, almost exclusively through a, um, a wholesaler uh, that uh, did business uh, in, uh, in basically uh, the, uh, Syracuse, Buffalo, and uh, Rochester. And basically, I was outbidded. You know, I, I must have put in maybe a half a dozen bids. I was outbidded each time. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I felt that, you know, I, I made a I made maybe two very competitive bids. I thought I had a real good shot. The other ones I just threw, you know, mm -hmm. threw a number in, didn't think I was going to get it, but just wanted to go through the process. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a very competitive process. I, I didn't land any properties through it. I've since have been looking at the uh, MLS um, and uh, found actually surprisingly a number of properties that uh, I, I didn't think I, I would find, frankly, through the MLS. Uh, um, I haven't made any uh, uh, bids on those properties yet, but uh, uh, I was going to call uh, Colleen and her team to uh, hook mm -hmm. up and uh, see if we can get some representation. Uh, we're very new at this. I'm a little, uh, you know, gun shy. I mean, I made I made the bids, but you know, frankly, afterwards, I don't really know what what I, what you know what what that means and and what I would uh, uh, entail afterwards. But uh, trying to get uh, trying to get our feet wet and. Um, uh, you know, single family homes, maybe duplexes, uh, uh, and start from there. Okay. And, and Tom, 
Uh, there's a actually, I, I want to get back to you afterwards when, um, because uh, I want to ask you, because obviously you were putting in multiple bids. I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but but I, I but 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 it's a perfect example of 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 what's going on right now, and we'll talk about that afterwards. Okay? All right, I definitely want to get back to that. So basically, you're looking for single family homes. You looking for A, B, C, D type areas all over the place? I prefer, uh, you know, B. You know, there are some. Okay. Uh, B and B on up. I don't think I can afford probably A, but uh, um, B on up. Uh, I, I want to, you know, I want to establish. Uh, I want to feel good about the property that I own yeah, and did. be a yeah. good landlord, frankly. And and mm -hmm. not not that you can't. In in in, yeah. I just think I'll get better tenants, uh, have, have better relationships. Um, and yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's a naive thing to say, but that's that's what I believe. So. No, it's it's not, and we it's it's definitely not what you're talking about. I totally agree with, and um, uh, also make sure you put your information in the chat box because if we don't know, obviously we know here, but nobody knows your uh, phone number. That's okay. the great thing about this about this group here. We can actually call you. Hey, listen, I got, hey Tom, I got this property. Hey Dan, I got this property. Whatever. So make sure you guys put your information in, the, in, in that chat box. Okay. We'll do it. Thanks, Joe. All right. Who else? I'll go, Joe. Um, my name's Farrell. Those of you who do not know, well, most of you do, uh, Gabriel Petzios. I, I have actually, uh, my, I'm actually a self-storage buyer um, anywhere in the country. Um, any shape, any size, uh, numbers don't lie. So if the numbers work, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get it down and we do pay finder's fees. Um, Again, anywhere in the U.S., um, it, it doesn't matter who it is or what it is. Uh, well, again, numbers are numbers, and if the money works, it works. Um, I actually also have a um, uh, something else uh, that um, I have a contract uh, of property in Pittsburgh, Missouri. Um, the buyer didn't see it as a good fit, so I mean, we're trying. We are using other resources, but I figure I'd use free as a resource as well to uh, see if anyone wants to uh, take it on. Um, it's thirty thousand square feet and eleven acres of land. Um, so um, it's you know it's just, it's in pretty good. It's it's not in really good shape, but uh, nonetheless, though, um, it's it's uh, you know it can it can work. Um, if anyone wants to know more, I'm gonna put my contact information in the chat box and uh, get a hold of me and uh, we can talk. Perfect. All right. Uh, anyone else? I'll go. I'm Tiffany. Uh, most of you know me as the Tiffany that works with Josh Rosenberg. Um, he's not on today because again, he's, you know, just super busy over there in Long Island. So um, we, I put everything in the chat box, but we're pretty much looking for mainly we've moved over to the commercial industrial space. So, um, some of you may know, we bought a pretty good sized space over in Williamson and we are in the middle, uh, we're in contract, but hoping to close, um, I think by July for a, a huge, huge, um, commercial space over in Phelps. So that was like a pretty big deal that he worked pretty hard on. So. That's kind of where we're at. We moved away from the residential a bit, but obviously we're always looking for those deals that are out there. So single family homes, um, edge of the city, surrounding areas, gates, grease, that type of stuff. I have a couple over near Rondecoy, but it's not my favorite place to be. But um, so that's pretty much what we're looking for, um, mainly focusing on that commercial industrial. That's it. All right, Tiffany. Perfect. Uh, anyone else? Um, I'll go real Damn. quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask Tiffany what she's planning on doing with the uh, the space. Going to keep it as is, or so, um, so the one in Williamson um, doesn't have a uh, real lot of um, parking space, so it's really hard. If it did, that building would be amazing for a distillery. I cannot deny um, that just the woodworking inside there is pretty awesome. So, but that for it's really hard for parking, um, even loading and unloading. There's no dock that meets the ground, so everything's raised up. Um, so that space there, we actually have um, what I believe, it, hopefully if it goes through by the end of the week, we have a 
tenant that's moving in there that does um, works on motorcycles. He has a motorcycle shop and he's Rochester and he's expanding. So that's what's going there. The Phelps property is a whole nother ball of wax. So uh, plan is to use the open space um, as storage for boats and campers. Um, the enclosed space, there's a couple small units we're using. Um, we got one guy that's going to you know, store some cars in there, stuff like that. Um, he's working on some other deals as far as um, bigger, more um, room storage, I guess you would say, um, kind of like a storage unit within a building. Um, but that's going to take some renovation. So we're kind of looking at what that looks like for cost wise and um, other than that, there's a, um, already a car shop over there. Um, so there's a mechanic that's been running out of there for ridiculous amounts of years. Um, so he's going to stay. Um, but there's probably like 120 square foot of property that we're, you know, sectioning off and going to make work. There's a guy over there right now who actually um, uh, mm -hmm. works with like really small like machine, he builds little things. I don't even know these big, huge machines that are like okay. little, like this big. And um, he's moving. So he's he's got a different building. So his space will be open, but that'll be the last space we have. But there's office space over there. Um, it's just a lot. It's you, you walk through it, it's just more and more and more and more. So it'll be a lot of different stuff over there, but it is literally in the heart of Phelps. Like it is the industrial space of Phelps. Like I'm hoping that once the word spreads, we can fill it pretty quickly, but we have it listed in some pretty low amounts, mainly just to get traffic in there and land people in there for, you know, five to 10 years and then go from there. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know. It's the biggest one we've bought. So Josh was, you know, on the fence back and forth, but Matt drew and went over with him and checked the space out and kind of made sure that he was, you know, kind of mentored him a bit to make sure he was headed in the right direction, making the right deal, that kind of thing. And Matt, you know, Matt can be kind of standoffish with stuff if he's, you know, if he's as sketchy about it and he was all about it. He told Josh, he's like, you're all about it. But that was a fight. I mean, multiple other people tried to buy that space and the realtor just wasn't having it. The guy wasn't accepting it. And finally, Josh was like, listen, I need to talk to him. Like, it's crazy how having your own conversation with those people, what that can do. So, so yeah, so it worked out. So hopefully it's supposed to close. They're all about it. They're already, I mean, they've shown it to new ten, new potential tenants for us and okay yeah, that's the plan all right. All right. it's just wondering if you're going to repurpose um, it maybe into apartments or something then well no let's, let's no see. i don't say guys hold on guys and i apologize oh, I, I, oh, I want to be respectful here i just want to be able to give everybody the opportunity to do their haves and wants real quick and then oh, sorry. Our, please I, I apologize so i just want to be able to do that um is there anybody else who can who want who wants to be able to put out what they're looking for, what they're looking to buy? Um, all right, I think we're all actually let me actually I'll I'll finish up here real quick here. I'm looking for commercial residential properties. Um, obviously, we're doing storage right now. Uh, we are also um, I may pot depending on what happens. I have a two family in the 19th ward. Um, it's going to be a value play. It's going to need some work. It's in between Tennessee Park Boulevard and Westfield Street. If you are interested, it's going to need some work. Um, one of the tenants is going to be out of there. The other tenant is paying very low rent. And that's going to go for probably somewhere in the $100,000 range. It's worth well above beyond that. So if you are interested, please give me a call on that. Um, and um, Obviously, we're also looking for apartment buildings. And again, obviously, Gabe mentioned we're also doing storage facilities. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's any more announcements we have to do. Andy, are there any more announcements or anything like that? Or are we, are we good to go here? I know we're running uh, a little. Uh, wow. No, I think we covered them all. I think everybody heard them. So we should be okay. good. Perfect. Perfect. All right. And sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Tiffany, uh, about that. I just wanted to make sure to get to get through everything. And um, so I think the question was, are you guys going to be repurposing your your place over there or is it, or is it just going to be kept commercial industrial? No, it's, it's okay, Joe, no worries. I'm extremely long-winded, so you can cut me off at any time. No, it's all right. Um, well, I, I just, I need to be able to get the stuff. So I want to make sure to get to get, get the questions. I want to make this live interactive too. Yeah, so no, that- I want to be respectful to everybody here. Yeah, no, that's okay. 
Um, no, we're not going to we're not going to be reconverting it to any sort of residential. It'll it'll stay completely like commercial industrial. So you guys bought a value play, which which is fantastic. So yes, exactly. you know, you're, you're going to go in, you're going to keep the rents low, and then you're able to increase the rents over time and then increase the value of it. So it's just fantastic. So that's a great move. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Good for Josh. Thank you. I want to say congratulations. So, you know, and, um, but a, a really quick, funny story. Um, Gabe, who just talked about that 30,000 square foot uh, storage facility that he has for sale yesterday, because, um, you know, I'm looking for storage. One of my storage hunters goes, Joe, I think I got a great deal. Oh my God. And he goes, it's 30,000 square feet, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going through it. I'm looking at it. And I get on the phone with a real estate agent and I go, listen, I, you know, I, I, I'd be doing this with, with my, I, with my partner, uh, Scott, she goes, Scott, she goes, she goes, is it Scott Spear? I go, yeah. And it, he goes, he goes, he's a, because he goes, because a couple of wholesalers want to wholesale this thing out. And I'm going, this would be a perfect thing for me and Scott to partner up on. What facility was it? The exact one that Gabe was talking, the exact one that Gabe has under contract. So my, I have a storage hunter who lives in Kentucky, who found this place in Missouri, who contacted me here in New York, who then I went back and talked to the real estate agent that's representing Scott, Gabe, and Shane. And then I was going to call Scott, who lives in Cal, who's right now in California, to talk about this exciting opportunity and of finding out it was that same exact same opportunity. So I was going to ask Scott. And then, then I was going to put in an insulting offer because they said they said they wanted to sell it. And uh, so I didn't do it. So Gabe, I didn't insult you or Scott. Joe, did you talk to Kristen? Uh, no, I talked to Melanie, who works with Kristen in the office. Okay, okay. Really Kristen, a real estate agent. So okay. the point Kristen, of the is I'm growing tentacles all over the place, and now we're all getting intertwined. Yeah, it's very interesting, because so. Kristen, Scott, and Shane and I had a Zoom call on um, a couple of days ago trying to figure out what we're going to do with it, because, yeah. you know, it's just not a good fit. Uh, for various reasons, but it, uh, it'll be a good value play down the road, but it's a heavy yeah. lift. So yeah, so there's 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 deals out there, people, and uh, everybody. Uh, it's crazy. I don't care if you're here in Rochester or you're looking at something in Missouri. Uh, big city, very small world. I was kind of upset yesterday, Gabe. Very upset because <laughs> I was hoping it's going to be the third facility because I lost. The third facility, which if we have time, I'll talk about, which is still mind boggling to me. That was a million dollar, actually it was a million dollar facility worth over $2 million, which we'll talk about that afterwards. I'm still going through a little bit of therapy, trying to get over that. Um, but before we get started here, does anybody have anything that they want to go over? Any questions? I, I like keeping this thing live interactive. I don't want to be the only one talking here. Anybody have anything? Everybody is good. Amazing. Uh, um, a couple of things that I know some of the people were talking about is um, uh, things going on in the market right now. Um, I know uh, uh, some people that I talk to are, because I'm hearing both sides of the story. I want to know what everybody else is hearing here. I'm hearing the market is doing fantastic. I'm buying. I can't wait to sell. I'm hearing, hey, I'm not buying because I'm waiting for the market to fall down. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the middle of everything going on, trying to buy right. I want to know what some of the other people here are doing and finding when it comes to uh, what what you're coming up with with pricing on your properties. Who's got something that they're working on right now? I can't be the only one buying properties on this call. Well, There's no way. Yeah, I know from my uh, my my Zillow reports that I get uh, that uh, all the properties have, have gone up 10, 10, 15 percent in the last three months. So it's like I don't know what's going on. It was just totally unexpected <clears throat> that I saw that. Well, inventory is very low. Okay, so a lot yeah. of people are leaving. 
you know, so, so that's, that's the crazy thing. I know um, Greg Taylor, who's part of this group, I, I saw something on Facebook where I think he went to go put an offer in on a house in West Arondequite. It was in the high twos and they went in in the threes thinking they were going to get it. And someone came in and put an offer in the fours off of St. Paul Boulevard. And I was like, wow. So, you know, a lot, a lot of the people right now, so right now I'm just waiting to see what's going on. I know my neighbor, um, which I wanted to buy her house. My neighbor, it's a 2,600 square foot house. She moved in back in 1980. And it was literally a time capsule. Like we're talking, it is literally a time capsule. There is, when she bought it, it had probably been rehab probably eight to 10 years before she moved in. So it still has to this day, yellow formica countertops. It has carpeting in both bathrooms, okay? Carpeting in the kitchen. Wallpaper, as far as the eye can see, okay? And um, they, they listed it for, you know, fairly good price. They offered it to me for 200. I said, no way. Um, I needed to get for right around 125 because I wanted to make sure to cover because obviously interest rates are going up. So I'm buying my prices today or what I think they're going to be eight months to a year from now. No matter what, I want to cover my butt. But they had 24 different couples go in there, five offers. And this place needs about for me, I would have put in close to $90,000 worth of work. And it needs a $22,000 septic system to be put into the property, included in that $90,000. So it is uh, in the, what I, I don't know if I'm just me, but I'm seeing in the uh, properties that are being sold in the suburbs, those are still going strong. Uh, the ones in the city, especially the rentals, I'm seeing uh, price drops. Constant price drops. Uh, one of my friends on the MLS, he's finding a ton of properties, tons of properties. I think he's done 19 or 20 now uh, since I don't know how many last few months that he's gotten off the MLS. Oh, who is who is uh, changing their their model in regards to what they're paying for prices? I'm just going to throw in that nationwide this whole 40 year mortgage crap is slowing down the, what was supposed to be a reset and it might actually break the reset completely. So mm -hmm. like when you, when, yeah, it's, it's bad. Me and Glenn were talking about wait, it earlier. Wait, 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 what do you mean by a reset? What do you mean, Andy? So everybody was anticipating market pressure to drive, even though there's a housing shortage. If you, if you actually run the numbers, there's no housing shortage. There's a demographic shift to, higher demand areas like there, there actually is no housing shortage we've always run the same percentage of shortage as a country since like we started tracking it in the early 90s it's a pent-up demand issue and it's now looking like a shortage because you can't build a home for less than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars new anywhere in the country. It doesn't matter where you are. You can't, not including land and other stuff. You just can't do it. Like even modulars are going for $200 a square foot now. Wow. So that there's a gap now of affordability based on demographics. And there's also gaps in places that are in high demand for people to move. Overall number of family units that are living together doesn't exceed the number of homes that exist in America. So there's no shortage there's just an issue. And we were, you know, market wise, we were looking at market pressure, pushing prices down number one, because to afford a $250,000 mortgage, that family has to make over a hundred thousand a year. Well, we know that the average family is not making over a hundred thousand dollars a year in America. That's just not realistic. Right. The other part is that the, um, you know, the, the, the demand level with the 7% interest rate, is creating all sorts of issues and they can't just print money and wish that away. It's just not going to happen. So in a perfect world, the market would have pushed down over the next year, 18 months, and there would have been a complete, you know, come to Jesus moment. But now with banks collapsing and all the other stuff, and now this 40 year mortgage, 
the amortization table on a 40 year mortgage means you're going to pay, let's say your payment's 2,500, you're going to dump $27,000 into your home and you're going to own $1,600 of it after the first year because they front load so much of the interest now because you're carrying it an extra 10 years. So in the first 10 years you own that home, you're going to have less than 10% equity for 10 years of housing payments. So you're basically locking people in to a renting situation with no skin in the game for them. So there's, there's just, there's a lot of moving parts right now and it completely screwed the whole market up because the way it should work is 30 year mortgages, prices have to come down because people can't afford to pay for it because they're not making six, seven figures to, to cover this mortgage. Like a $400,000 mortgage for an average family, they'd have to make like 100 and what is it, 129,000, 140,000 a year to afford that. That ain't happening. It's just not. So now with this 40 year, they're going to be able to afford it because now their payment went from, you know, 4,000 a month back to 2,500 a month. Oh, all of a sudden this $500,000 house is affordable. So on the consumer side, that's going to screw everything up. And as people's disposable income continues to decrease, as things, people are getting laid off and things are collapsing, banks are shutting down. Like nobody talked about it, but another bank shut down on Monday. Did you hear about it in the news? Another one closed, got bought up by Chase. <clears throat> JP Morgan came in and snatched them up in an emergency. The Fed froze their stuff. Morgan bought them out. So it's, it's just this continuing chain of stupid. And it's starting to look a lot like 2007, actually, <laughs> all over again, because now you're going to be punished if you have good credit and you want to buy a home. You're going to actually pay for people with bad credit, which means we're going to be putting people out there and raising risk of defaults and, and just overall economic pain. So you're going to see the Airbnb market, if it's not like vacation luxury, $500 a night plus, that's, that market is going to collapse. So because people aren't going to just travel to travel, they're going to go to a hotel that's 100 bucks instead of paying 300 bucks and having to pay a cleaning fee and screw around and it's it's going to be it's going to be a hot mess but that'll also relieve some of the pressure on lower cost homes in some of these urban markets that have converted to Airbnb that now have to be a full time rental or something so it, it should be yeah there's no predicting it it's crystal ball time like what do you see yeah you know the, the only thing i figure Andy you can predict with that is going to be the price no matter what you know um, you know, for me, like, you know, I just, I just picked up a rental that, that I've bought and hold, but when I, for me personally, I, I I'm going to look at them like, okay, I can rent it out. I can, uh, fix it and flip it, or I can just assign it out. So no matter what, you know, one of those three options, I know I'm going to be safe price wise. Yeah. So, but you <laughs> don't but, run margins you make sure you get your butt covered before you go into a deal yes absolutely the, the FOMO people are going to be the ones who really suffer here the people who are paying two hundred thousand dollars for a house worth 160 hoping they can cash flow it as an Airbnb they're going to get creamed yes and and also what I'm seeing too is that I'm like because I, I get phone calls you know being part of this group everybody calls which is a great thing and so many people are getting so um they're 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 getting so impatient like yesterday, I talked to a guy and it was a house we were just trying to sign out. There's two of them. One of them he wanted to keep. And I knew it was not going to be good for him. Oh, Joe, the numbers look great. I go, in theory, everything looks great. But in reality, you're, you're, you're going to wish you'd never bought this property. And we went over the numbers and I showed him and he's just like, holy smokes. You know, but his impatience and a lot of people like the FOMO, fear of missing out. People are seeing that and they're just, man, some of the investors, some of the wholesalers I'm seeing, so I got this property and I'm like, you know, I, 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 we had one uh, where it was brought to, it was two of them, they were brought to me four times. And, you know, these, these wholesalers got it twice the price they should have gotten it for. And after everybody, many people looked at it and not one person said yes, not one. And I'm seeing that over and over again. You know, and um, and yes, the competition is kind of crazy, but you know, you I tell people you got to be patient right now. Right now, everything <laughs> is in this is back in 2007, 2008, 2009, everything right after that, subsequently, is where I made 
most of my money in regards to finding uh, fantastic deals. A lot of those properties I still have today. Okay. But I want to interject some stuff about the banking situation mm -hmm. that I did some research. And uh, uh, as of Monday, since 2008, five, uh, 568 banks have failed to date. And there's also 100, 186 banks that are currently in danger of failing in 2023. You can just do Google searches, you'll find all this. There's a lot of crap that's gonna be rolling downhill pretty soon. Yep. And if you've got good contacts with smaller banks, what, what I do is, especially the smaller regional banks or the small local banks, I say, hey, listen, if you have any, anything that's non-performing, non-paying, you know, say, well, we don't handle that. We have an asset manager, somebody in corporate. Who's 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 that person? Don't be afraid to call them. And sometimes, you know, say, well, listen, do we have to put it out to everybody? I go, I understand that. At the same time, something's going to come your way where where it's going to be so big or it's going to be a package deal where maybe maybe we come in there and, you know, before it gets to a bad situation, you know, to smaller smaller banks are more willing to work with with us than obviously than somebody like Chase or Bank of America. They're not even gonna, they won't even look at us. They're gonna be like, there's the door. They don't even want to talk to us. So if you if you've got an in with a bank you're using all the time, I would uh definitely, definitely take advantage of that, you know, and um even 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 some, even the lenders, even some of the hard money lenders. You know, and I'm sure Dan can attest to this. Sometimes all of a sudden, if these guys are loaning money out to somebody else and that person is all of a sudden underwater, that hard money lender, I know I've gotten the phone call. Hey, I got a guy, he's in trouble. You, you know, you want to get him out of this situation. Okay. And uh, that's also another way to be able to find some properties and get to get some better deals. Okay. Um, I mean, Dan, I don't know if you've had to do that. I, I think your dad, uh, I know Jim has had to do that a few times. Very, in, very infrequently. Um, yeah. we, we try to mm -hmm. uh, make the relationships with people that we don't have to worry about that. Uh, in, in the last couple of years, that I, I can only think of one. That's, that's a great track record. Yeah, for sure. It's actually a fantastic track record, which is really good. By the, way, by the way, people, feel free to interject and add stuff onto this because we all want to learn here from each other. That's the great thing about this group. We can actually really talk, talk instead of just, you know, through a whole entire crowd here. Do we have any estimates on how much the, the price of a new home is going up because of all the mandates they did for 2026 with the gas? Well, in, yes, in New York, yes, yeah. in, in yeah. New York, it's tough because land development costs have skyrocketed. Right now, lot costs are still like I still know builders who won't pay more than forty thousand a lot. But most of the smart builders who've already been through a downturn, who survived 07, 08, when I was at eighty four and selling to them, um, they are not doing tracks. They've halted purchasing land. They've halted. Mm. Uh, spec homes, they're doing on-site, build on-site, um, on customer's land, um, you know, so I guess it would be off-site. Um, and they're doing, um, you know, gearing up to do remodels and stuff to keep their guys employed and to keep busy and keep cash flowing and keep the paychecks there. Um, they're still, you know, the Ryan homes are always going to build, but they're slowing down. Uh, as far as acquisitions go, the, the you know, they're, they're really the only big 20 builder in New York. Um, so they're, they're kind of a non-factor, but even they, I think now are getting north of $300 a square foot for a new build. And that's where you can't build an affordable home. Like if you're going to build a $200,000 home, you're talking about a 650 square foot box. Like who's going to live in a 650 square foot box. That's like a tiny home. Like nobody wants to be there. So there, there is no way for them to build affordable housing right now without, losing money and they're not going to do it mm -hmm. wow so so andy's called th that wasn't 
that that's not all also because because of they're taking away gas and just they just want to do electric no it's just it's just new york in general like the whole electric push the biggest cost increase on that is the switch gear because there's just such a big backlog of transformers and stuff the cost has gone up 63 percent in the last like six months so you're talking about double plus the price of, of transformers to go into these these places it's not as much of a deal uh, when you're not doing track homes because if you're doing offsite, you, you have telephone poles. They're just going to run a line and 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 put a, a weather head on and call it a day. Um, but from a you know a development standpoint, it's more permits, more approvals, more delays from RG&E up until you know RG&E selling out on this whole plan and and being like, yeah, okay, we'll electrify. Um, you know, for the last six or eight years, the state has been trying through, you know, over-regulation to stop natural gas going into to tracks. They've been fighting this fight since like 2017. Um, and they don't, you know, nobody knows if they're not sitting on the board at, at freaking home builders fighting it in Albany. But the reality is that they ha they've been trying to do this for years and Cuomo was never willing to put pen to paper to just screw the whole entire state over like Hochul is. So, the you know they the home builders were able to stop it hitting because we actually had representation in Albany that was builder friendly ish but with the demographic shift and the redistricting they did there's not enough people in Albany now who are on the builder side to stop it so like they've been able to stop the, the natural gas law they've been able to stop the mandatory sprinkler systems in every residential single family home. And now it looks like they're not going to be able to stop either of those. Well, we know they can't stop the gas, but the next thing is going to be sprinkler systems in every home, which means that when you have a fire, you're going to have a complete loss and your insurance is going to skyrocket because of it. Like they're saying, oh, the insurance is going to love it. It's going to be cheaper. Have you ever seen what a, dr a, a wet sprinkler system does to a home. <laughs> yeah. It's not cheaper. There's nothing about it that's cheaper. Yeah. Because the loss yeah, I've is had gonna, uh, they're gonna lose everything. Yeah, I've had fire losses and most of the damage is, is, is from the water, from the firemen. Exactly. Yeah. They saturating everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so the sprinkler gonna system is gonna go off in every room? Yes. Wow. Yep. The, the entire house has to be has to be run with 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 sprinkler heads so it's not law yet but they can't stop it anymore like just like they couldn't stop this natural gas thing so yeah. and they're and they're partnering so part of it is they're partnering with rg and e rg and e used to fight this like it used to take six months to a year when they were going to put a new tract in to do the research to prove to the state or to the county that the track couldn't support the electricity requirements of that <clears throat> neighborhood without natural gas, right? They used to have to go and get permission to put gas in from, from the state or from the county every single time they wanted to put a track in because the state basically said, you can't put gas in. And then they were like, well, we're gonna. So now our genie is stuck upgrading everything, but they're doing it on a cost play. So what people don't know is the smart meters that are going in, once everybody has one, they're going to shift to the same way they build commercial, where you're going to pay peak rates and you're going to pay off peak rates. So if you want to have an air conditioner running at three in the afternoon when it's 97 degrees outside and 100% humidity, you're going to pay like $200 for that day to run your air conditioner. Because you're going to be buying your electricity at market rate. Hochul put a thing in the bill where if you agree to have natural gas removed from your home, your existing home, or your home is already all electric, your electric bill will be capped to 6% of your income. So think about that. Who pays 6% of their income into their utility bill right now? I sure don't. So what are they expecting where they're putting that cap in there? <laughs> so so if they make a million dollars a year, they'll let you pay 60,000? Pretty much. You'll pay whatever the market demands. 
up to whatever the 6% cap is. So they're doing it because they know low income people are going to end up like what happened in Texas when everything went sideways and they were all getting hammered with market rate prices, getting a $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 electric bill to heat their house. That's, that's what's going to happen. And they're going to, they're going to, you know, cap that because they're doing everybody a favor. Well, always interesting. This is why I'm looking in Knoxville. So if you've got stuff down that way in Tennessee, you let me know. Well, yeah. So, um, oh, if I, I wanted to actually get back to Tom, is Tom even still on right now? Are you there, Tom? Yes. Oh, so Tom, you obviously you're trying to find properties and you were having a problem. You were, uh, cause, um, you were, cause you're not the only one. I've, you're not the only one that's, that's said that I've had tons of calls on this. And, um, so you're not the only one going through this. You, you said that you were, uh, you were dealing with a wholesaler and you were putting in bids and you were getting out bid. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, when the wholesaler you're dealing with, was he sending out mass text messages, mass emails to everybody? You had to compete that way, or were you doing it one-on-one? -on -one? He was just calling a few people. What was the No, situation? no, it was, it was mass communication. And so it was by text, email? Uh, actually, he hit me up both ways. <laughs> yeah, it was Western New York. Western yeah, New yeah, York. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, home, buyers. home buyers there you go yeah no, and i don't i don't actually see him doing much business anymore i don't I, in in this area i haven't seen I mean, I, there's a new guy uh i don't i don't know his name um but now i'm getting texts from him but yeah yeah so i mean at at a minimum properties would have you know on on the on the show date um would have you know probably a minimum of uh you know six buyer or six potential buyers um bob i would uh, bob i would uh, bob helped me in you know looking at the properties and and advising me on what to uh you know offer what what work needed to be done because that's probably my weakest point i don't understand um rehab costs but um yeah, I just, uh, you know, there was probably two properties, I think I said earlier, uh, two properties that I put a really, you know, I thought a very competitive bid in and, and uh, I, I got some feedback from them saying that, you know, I was second on the list and, uh, and you know, outbid pretty substantially, I understand. Um, and frankly, I wasn't willing to pay more. I thought that was, a, you know, that was what I was willing to pay. And so be it if I can't get the, can't get the deal. And then, and then more, more recently, I got a little dismayed with that whole process. Most recently, I've looked at, at um, as I said, uh, MLS, and I, I, I'm surprised that there are more, uh, you know, deals that I'm willing to take a look at. And uh, I, I just don't have my ducks in a row. I haven't, you know, I haven't. Um, I need to talk to Colleen's team and mm -hmm. uh, and and get some representation in that regard. But uh, I'm new to all this, so you know, learning a lot. Well, no, that's okay. No, it's what you're going to, I don't care if you've been doing this for a while or you're new. Um, because, you know, a lot of times too, as Scott and I, we get tons of calls from people. We kind of like to, we figure if we're getting these calls, that means everybody else is also going through, which is why I wanted to talk about this with you. Um, so now quick question here. How more apt are you to want to go look at those properties every time you get a text message from 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 those wholesalers? And I'm not talking bad about any wholesalers. You're gonna understand. You're gonna understand what, uh, what I'm getting to here in a second. Here. Um. Well, you know, less apt because uh, of just you know not being successful in the process. Uh, so uh, I mean, if if the if if it's in my, uh, as Bob would call it, my farm zone in my uh, uh, target area, uh, I'll still go out and and take a look. But uh, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to throw money, you know, you know, too much money over what I, you know, think is an appropriate uh, uh, deal. So you know, I try to remain consistent to that my analysis. And uh, so lately, I haven't gone to many at all. Actually, I I, I don't even see Western Home. Uh, buyers in the area anymore. 
I'm not getting any communications from them. Mm-hmm. As I said, there's a new guy. Well, I don't know if he bought bought part of the business or something, but. Well, you, you know, and a lot of people, I mean, I know people who do go to them I, years, a while back, I got came how long ago it was now. I went to one of them. There was a bunch of people there. And uh, for me personally, I just don't like to, I'm not telling people to not go. It's always worth going because you never know. Right. Um, you know, and what I tell people is, is that obviously don't just rely on one person. There's tons of other wholesalers out there. More importantly is, is that some people, they have the wherewithal to be able to find it themselves. If you can, you can definitely do that. Um, you know, people ask me, Joe, why don't you go to the the auctions downtown? And I know people who go to the auctions and, but this is me. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Okay. So don't take what I do as gospel. Um, for me, I do not want to go down there and compete against all these other people because a lot of people there typically end up, you know, they pay higher than they want to. They're glad they got a deal. Um, and then the worst thing is, is that when you find someone, especially, you know, like on the mass text messages or mass emails, hey, come look at this property. If you find somebody, especially if they're newer or if they've been doing this for a little bit and they're impatient. And then what I realize is, is that trying to compete against somebody who's impatient, they're willing to pay a higher price. Which then if I start thinking I got to compete with them, it's going to put me in a much worse financial situation. I don't want to do that because now I'm letting that person's impatience control how I usually do my business. And I can't have, I cannot have that at all. Okay. Cause I started doing that and I'm like, no, I can't. Cause now all of a sudden I get, okay, I got a property, but I have that feeling in my gut. I'm like, now I have to make these numbers work somehow, some way. And it was all because it was controlled because I tried following somebody else. Okay. Um, All of us on here, we know patience. And yes, the deals are a little bit slimmer lately. Uh, Things will start to loosen up. But, you know, some of the conversation that I've had, you know, like for me, I've said no to a bunch of properties um, where I could have made five or $10,000, whatever the heck it is, or $20,000, but I knew it was going to be a very hard road. I just didn't want to do that. I don't want to, I have, thank God I have enough stuff going on where, you know, I don't have to do that. At the same time, when we do get a deal, it's, it, it's more, it more than pays off. Okay. And that's just because of patience. Um, For you, Tom, is obviously, especially being part of this group, part of this call, I mean, it's like 300 members in this group. There's so many different meetings, the coffee club, the, you know, the landlords, the main meetings, this meeting, there's so many different, it's crazy, the upstate New York, uh, real estate, the meet, meetups, everything in between, you should be able to find properties. You know, Dan, Dan is a perfect example because Dan, not only, even though, you know, they, they do a lot of lending and they know other, other, other real estate investors, Dan is still networking himself because instead of just, instead of just, you know, boxing, boxing himself in with, with the group that he works with, now he's expanding his reach, expanding his net, whereas, you know, he'll be able to start getting stuff because a lot of people that Dan deals with, these guys want to keep it for themselves. Some of them, may, they make, he may get a few deals here and there, but what's going to happen is, is that um, being in this group, he'll get, he'll get some other stuff. He'll expand his reach, you know, and that is, that is a major key for you to do you know, outside of that, yes, and get stuff on the MLS, okay, and hook up with wholesalers, but, you know, really, truly, truly network. You got to let yeah. people know, okay. Um, I've, I've got people who text me on a weekly basis and like, Joe, I don't want to bother you. I'm like, no, you need to because so many people, so much stuff, you, you want to be that rash on somebody's arm. There's that itch. Oh, I got to call Tom. There's that itch. Oh, I got to call Tom. That's what you have to do. Good, good advice. I, I, yeah, I, you know, uh, uh, I was uh, more connected than I than I am recently. Uh, Bob was very helpful in facilitating uh, uh, a lot of, um, uh, you know, networks and stuff like that. Uh, but no, I'm back in. I want to, and I very much uh, understand what you're saying. And uh, 
um, you know, need to regularly attend, uh, you know, other meetings uh, once again, as I was doing. So uh, I'm back in. I appreciate your, uh, your advice. And uh, let's talk about that duplex you have. Oh, you got to call me. I think <laughs> hopefully my information's on the chat box and uh, you guys, you can reach me. We can talk about that. That's not a problem. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and by the way, who, who else here is buying anything out? Who's, has anyone bought anything recently off the MLS, uh, what, whether, whether it be for investment or even for themselves to live in? Anybody here? Joe, would the uh, property I put under contract under LoopNet be considered yeah. for us? Um, oh, 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 that was that was on that was on uh, that was listed. The morning, yeah, that very same morning he listed it, I found it. So like that was like literally like two three hours old, and oh, I wow. I got it and nailed it. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but you know the reason why I asked that is because I only know very few people that are buying off the MLS or finding great, great deals. You know, a majority of the people, especially on here, are fine. I mean, I don't know about you, I'm finding mine off market. The storage, I'm looking on both. We're calling and we're also looking. Yeah, um, but Joe, you, you can't, as far as the, the MLS and the storage or whatever, I mean, that was literally the first property I found in the MLS in like a year and a half since I started this project. I mean, wow. you know, I, I don't remember. I just go on there just for shits and giggles, just to see what's going on with the market, stuff like that. And then I just happen to see it. But as far as all my properties that I've under contract or whatever you want to call it, it's yeah. all been every single hundred percent of them have been off market. So mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and that deal over there, even though it took you a year and a half, obviously I know you're, you know, you got Scott involved or whatever though, but uh, your assignment fee is going to be more than what most people make in a year. Yes. So, so it will, uh, people think, well, geez, a year and a half, but that one deal will make up for that year and a half, yeah. you know? And um, I, uh, I, I talked to one guy, uh, he was looking at a property and, and, and I, I asked him what the heck he was making per year. And he was looking at another pro. He was looking at property, and 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 it was really really tight. And and I told him, I said, what would happen, you know, if you'd gotten it at at, at a much lower price, and what would he have made? And he would have made um, he would have made more than half of his regular yearly paycheck. And then when he realized, he goes, but Joe, I've been through, I've looked at so many properties. I looked at this, I looked at that. I go, I understand that. At the same time, yes, you, you, you would have gotten this thing under contract too high of a price. It wouldn't have really worked. But just imagine, at least now you know. So, you know, and, and he be, I think it would have been like three or four months. I've done this, I've done that. I'm going, who cares? Who cares? If, who cares if you do, if it takes you seven or eight months. You would have made half a year's, half a year's salary. You're not mixing cement, okay? And then he told me what he did for a living, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, uh, which is harder? The real estate's more frustrating than your job, but the job is going to be harder. I go, so average it out. I go, I go, I go. If you find two of them, you're 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 gonna you're gonna, you're gonna match your paycheck. You're gonna double your income for your family. You know, so, so a lot of the people that I talk to, I'm telling you, you know, you, you got to start averaging it out because I'm hearing a lot of frustrated investors, especially wholesalers, man. Well, yeah, but Joe, part of the problem though is that is going back to the conversation you had a little bit ago about wholesalers being and being patient is that part of the wholesaler's job is to, is their bread and butter is to, when they find a deal, to make the numbers work for the end buyer. Because yeah. I see, like, I go on the Facebook groups. So I have, like, 30 properties under contract. Contact me. Well, no kidding you do. I know you do. But they're all not good. The numbers aren't going to work, though. Mm -hmm. I can get 30 properties under contract to tomorrow. But the numbers aren't going to work. Is me And my wholesale and my fees are going to be, like, maybe a dollar. It's like, what, what am I working for? I'm not going to work my butt off for, like, that much money, you know? So if you take your time and find the right deal, and it, the numbers work, and and the and the, you know the price point, every all everything falls into place. 
all of a sudden you see in the long run is that you, well long yeah the long run you make much your fees are, are substantially higher and you also increase your business too so that that buyer is going to come to you next time like hey Gabe wait remember that prime like yeah so the next time you get another one that's how it works but if you're so stupid sticking and patient and like oh my god I got to get the numbers I got to get the numbers well, chill out hold on find the numbers get the right property and you'll see what happens and lo and behold look what look you know that's where we are today so. That's part of the wholesale job. Is the guy just be patient, not just be patient, but make the numbers work for you and for them. And 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 you, Gabe, well, you're basically the wholesaler job is to bring value. And just so everybody knows, Gabe right. deals only in storage. So so when he brings value, you know, and he finds a good deal, his his assignment fees could be in the multiple five figures into the six figures for value, okay? Now, can you do that on the retail? I mean, on the housing side, you know, it's you can make some good money. I mean, can you do $100,000 in a house in Rochester? Uh, you know, I know people who've done some pretty good wholesale fees, uh, but obviously Gabe is dealing in commercial stuff. Um, I know in, uh, in, the, in the residential side, I talked to a guy and he was trying to get me to buy three properties. He wanted $89,000 a double and two singles. I was, I was at, uh, and he, he goes, I need to sell. I need to sell. And it was going to be too much of a hard sell. And two of them were not in, not in a not so great area. And um, I, I said, listen, I, I would be right around 69 to 72, but he wanted 89,000. So it was going to be too hard. There was no value. All the value was being sucked out that thing you know and um i i just see these people who are just you know they're trying to you know and i knew in those areas i know some of the prices were dropping i knew they were you know and i'm seeing on the mls i just saw one this morning they dropped uh, it was a house on it was on i think it was on copeland street which says that should be right there in between parcels and bay street area close to um close to the, you know, the better part, but they dropped about like $10,000. It's been sitting there on the market. And I don't know who has it listed, but I would have been, me personally, I stick my guns. I'm like, I'm going to be around $35,000, 40 grand maximum. You know, so that's why I don't even bother. But at least that way, I know it brings value to the table if I want to get rid of it. It'll definitely cash flow if I want to rent it out. And if I need to get rid of it, I can get rid of it it leaves me room. They had it 74 down to 64. I, I won't, I won't even, I won't even, I won't even think about going to it. There, there is just no way, you know, I, I mean, who else is, please, I want to hear from, we want to hear from other people. We want to be able to learn from each other. Who else is going through this or has done this? Don't tell me nobody's doing deals on this, on, on, on this Zoom call. I have, a, I have a question for you, Joe. Go ahead, Leslie. Yeah. When you um, purchase a house in these areas and they're like, like you say, $35,000, how much are you putting into them to get them ready to be either rented or sold? Well, what do you, oh, well, here's the thing. I mean, look, you know, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to put in, uh, I mean, uh, it's all on the area, you know. Um, I know there was a company here in Rochester who came in about three years ago. Right now, they're in serious trouble right now. Uh, I won't say who they are. Their uh, model was it didn't matter if it was Pittsford or Avenue D. Every house <laughs> got granite. Every house got brand new kitchen, granite, and central air conditioning. Okay. That was their model. And I knew wasn't going to last. Lo and behold, it didn't last. <laughs> so, and they're, and they're a national company. They own thousands and thousands and thousands of properties all over, all over the, all over the States. Um, you, look, you're going to do it accordingly. You know, we went to look at a house yesterday. I went to, went to one of my friends to help them go through it. And it was, it was in a D type area. And um, he was going to be somewhere right around, he was going to put probably around 
with his guys, probably $12,000. Now there was another guy I know that went through that same property. He was twenty-five to $30,000 and the numbers never would have worked. Okay. So what's it gonna be worth on the back end, Leslie? That's, that's what I look at. And I leave a good enough spread. I do not want to be at 100%. If you're, if, if you're comfortable, if it's worth 65 and you buy it and you're going to be into it for 65,000, you're comfortable with it, do it. My, for me, I am not. I need to know that I can get out. I want an escape route. My escape route is having it at maximum of about $45,000. And that's maximum. That's me though. I mean, Leslie, when you check out, well, what's what's your? Are you looking just to long term holds, or if you buy a house that's thirty five thousand dollars, are you looking to just rent it out or, or flip it? What are you looking to do with it? Well, I guess that um, I always look at it to kind of depend on how much I have to put into it. I I'm thinking the closer I put into the actual value of the house, mm -hmm. the more I want to rent it because I'm not going to make the profit by selling. Is it something I can? put in and stay really below the value and get profit by uh, flipping it. That's what I'd be willing to do there. Did, did you originally go into that house to flip it? And then you ended up having to keep it as a rental? <clears throat> well, well, actually there's a house that um, I'm doing that with. I, di I didn't purchase a 35,000 house. That was, that was just an example. Okay. Um, but I do have one now that, um, I have one that I was looking to sell at first, but um, I've ended up renting it out. I have another one now that I'm looking to try to sell, but I'm not sure if I'd be able to get the price that I want. So I may end up renting that one out as well. Now, and 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 you know, and the great thing here that's that's why that's why I'm asking you questions. And I'm not trying to get too personal, but we like to be able to learn from each other here. Do when you the first house you were talking about that you were that you originally bought to flip, did you rent it out because you feel because you felt like you ended up putting in more money than you expected and you won't be able to sell it what you need to sell it at? And and if you sold it, would you do you think you may be taking a loss or you figure you'll make up for it by renting it out and then selling it later on? Well, my my thinking was um it, it ended up being more than I expected it to be taking much longer than I expected because I, I, this one I had purchased just before COVID, uh, actually from an auction. So I was stuck for about a year and a half with people living there and I couldn't do anything. Mm, okay. And um, then, you know, I, I was working on it. The guys I had working on it, they started out kind of good, but they began to get a little bit sloppy. Towards the end, so that, that's kind of what I said. Well, if things aren't the way I think they really should be to make a good profit, so I would go and, and go ahead and rent it, or fix it up a little bit more. But so I just ended up renting that one. Okay. I didn't feel like I was going to make too much of a profit um, <laughs> by selling, at least not what I would like to. Now, when you bought it, did, did were you comfortable at the price that you bought it? At that I time. thought the price was pretty good. I I bought it. Uh, well, it was in the auction, but you know, it's a little bit higher than I really wanted to pay. But um, I didn't think it was really too bad. So, if the tenants weren't there for a year and a half squatting, you you obviously do you think you would have done better? What, 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 yeah, what, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So a lot of unforeseen issues here so obviously and, and believe me I'm, I'm not trying to question what you're doing i ask these questions that will because i'm still learning we're all trying to learn here okay that's the great thing about this group here we can actually literally learn from each other well what, one of the things that uh, like looking at the house the outside the house looks pretty much okay i know there were people living there so uh I've learned better now, but I'm thinking, oh, there are people living there, so it can't be but so bad inside. Mm -hmm. That was a mistake. <laughs> a big mistake. When in doubt, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> oh, so yeah. you know, I, I never got to see the inside before the purchase. It was just 
going to the auction. So, you know, you know, I I could have bought a house about a month ago, where where, but I couldn't get on the inside. But I saw the outside. The outside was bad, especially with all the garbage around it, which automatically gave me an indication of what the inside is going to look like. And I just, again, that's me. I don't take those type of chances. Okay, especially right now with the way the laws are. I I I, I wanna I'm not I'm not trying to go for a first or second base hit. I want a third base or a home run. You know. And uh I mean so 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 Leslie, those two properties you're gonna rent out. Well, even though you're gonna rent it out, you're still gonna be okay because it'll cover what 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 you've got into the property payment wise. Um yes, I think so. It it'll be um It'll be worthwhile, not what I was hoping for and expected. And of course, the time frame was much longer <laughs> but, than I was expecting, but I, it will be, it will work out to be okay. Okay. Not, that's, that's the good thing, you know, you know, and um, has anyone else gone through what Leslie's gone through here? There's some really shy people or people don't want to admit stuff on this on this Zoom call today. Holy smokes. So I mean that very nicely. Um, I, I know for me, for all my rentals, um, uh, and I don't care if it's a rental, a fix and flip or a wholesale. If, if, if we pick up a wholesale deal, I want to know that if I have to hold it, it will still work for me. If I buy a flip, and it ends up becoming a rental, it will still work. Those, those, those are the criteria that I'm looking at now. I am not taking any chances. I'm not doing anything with that. Um, the two family that I recently looked at that we got under contract, you know, they were having a problem with, with one of the tenants, but I told them, I said, I said, listen, you know, I was gonna offer them a really, really low price and it would be more advantageous for him financially wise to get me into that into that other unit and he did and and i was able to give him an extra uh i went up about 25 almost thirty thousand dollars on the price just for a quick 10 minute walk through okay so uh, you know i definitely want to make it worthwhile for them i'm almost out of time over here um by the way, is anything anything else? I, we didn't get a whole. I, there was so much other stuff to go over that that's been going on, though. But I mean, is which we're not going to be able to get to today. There's no way we have enough time. Is there anything that people want to want to know about or have any questions about what we talked about here? Everybody's good. Everybody's taking notes. Everybody's learned everything they needed to learn. Um. Well. I know uh, I want to make sure that because we only got a couple minutes here. Uh, for anybody has questions about anything that's going to be going on, definitely get plugged in. Go on the Freo website, check out what's going on. Um, the next meeting we're going to have is going to be live. The, we do the first meetings in the mornings we do on Zoom like this. The third Thursday, which is going to be in two more weeks, we're going to be doing this meeting at Ferrari's Pizza. And it starts at seven. We usually get there around six thirty. Um, it's Ferrari's Pizza in East Rochester. That's live. It's not going to be any Zoom. There's not going to be anybody who can get on from the computer. Either you're there, you can hear what's going on and network. If you're not there, sorry. Okay, uh, but definitely check that out. And then the following week is going to be Carl Weeks is going to be doing the landlord meeting. Uh, which is the fourth Thursday of the night. That's also going to be live. And uh, Andy, I don't think that's run. I think that's just strictly live. There's no Zoom. There's no Zoom. On no, any the only Zoom is this one now. Nothing else goes out on Zoom. Wow. Yeah, pretty soon we'll probably end up doing this. We'll probably end up having to go live on this one pretty soon once once we get situated and figure out what's going on, event, you know, place-wise. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, if you have questions, go to the Freo website. And um, I guess that's pretty much about it. So I appreciate everybody getting on this morning. Definitely uh, get to next 
Thursday's mornings and next, especially next Thursday night's meeting. And uh, thank you very much. Everybody have a great day. Go do some real estate. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. Have a good Everybody. day. Thanks. We'll talk right. to you guys later. All right. Good day. <laughs> Andy, thank you very much. You got it, brother. See you later. All right. Have a great day. I'm out. You too.